Warning, the Gel Blaster toy shown in this video could be mistaken for a real firearm. Do not take Gel Blasters into public spaces or it will likely be treated as real by authorities. Gel Blasters are classified as toys in Queensland regulations, however this may be different in your state or territory. Be sure to check your local laws before buying or ordering a Gel Blaster. Also, ensure you use adequate eye protection whenever using Gel Blasters. Stay safe everyone. So, g'day, g'day boys and girls, welcome back to the studio for another Gel Blaster review, it's been a little while. Uh, what I'm going to do with this one and the next two reviews is I'm actually going to have a look at a couple of older blasters which I didn't ne never got a hand on because they were big and popular before I really started producing Gel Blaster content. So, I'm going to go back and just quickly revisit those as they are still for sale, they are still not at all bad options and especially if you're only new to it and you don't necessarily want to throw you know, two, three hundred dollars at a blaster and you want to buy something cheap to test it out or maybe buy something for the kids or that you're not too worried about. These are definitely good options. Not only that, but because they're cheap, you can still get upgrade parts for a lot of them. You can make them equally competitive to something brand new, if not better, for about the same cost in parts. So they're also good options if you are new and you want to look at potentially DIYing and learning that side of things. So without further ado, we'll jump into the first one, which is the Jinming M4A1 Gen 8 gel blaster rifle now this is probably the one which really got a lot of people going because it was it became a benchmark in a lot of cases for what others would be compared to the gen 9 started following along in a lot of the same ways uh, the acr at least for me is definitely the same again i definitely start comparing things to the acr because it's one of my favorites but this was one of the original big ones uh, at least when the scene in australia started blowing up so the best thing is that Jim Ming haven't just left it the way it was because this was an incredibly plastic blaster at the time. What they've actually done in the last like year or so, even though they've had new models released, they have done subtle upgrades on this. The main one that you'll notice is that the receiver is now nylon. It used to be incredibly plastic, just like the Scar, which we'll look at in another video. Um, so it is nice that they've done that. They didn't need to, but they did. I'd like that they would have done other things, but I mean, you can't complain, that's not bad by any stretch. So without further ado, we will get into it. Now what I am gonna do is I'm gonna try the close cam by physically holding a GoPro this time. So that way I can get the angles that I want and the lighting better. We'll see how that goes. Let me know what you think down below. If you think it's a good option, I might continue doing this until I eventually get something better set up where it's above and zoomed in and yeah. Anyway. Turn that on and we'll get into it. Lovely, lovely. Okay, so the first thing you will notice about this, like I mentioned, it is entirely plastic. There are nylon components, although nylon is a form of plastic, so please don't try and argue on that one because I really find it silly. But anyway, it is very lightweight. Um, this was definitely still a toy by comparison to some of the ones that come out recently, which definitely feel a bit more mature and a bit more... Uh, upgraded by comparison. They don't necessarily feel as much plastic and toyish but this one definitely still does or despite everything so something there just to keep in mind the other thing is obviously this is a very good base for upgrades especially on the externals because it is an m4 um, so that's all personal preference i prefer to move away from m4s because i find them somewhat boring because there's so many of them but that is personal preference and i do not by any mean begrudge by any means begrudge anyone who likes them because there's a lot to like I'm just sick of seeing them, <laughs> that's all. So, although it has been a little while since I've done one, it's been a lot of AKs recently for me, but anyway, moving on. Buttstock first, does have a bit of a cheek rest here, it's textured, but this is very plastic. You do have a butt pad there, once again, solid plastic, there's nothing special to this. To adjust it, you simply lift that up and pull it back like so, and if you pull it all the way out, there is your battery compartment. So I'll just show you that there. Battery compartment is contained within the buffer tube. Does use the standard black JST connector, so all your standard batteries will work. It does typically come with the stick style battery, which just pops into there just fine. You do need to be a bit careful with these when you put the buttstock back on, but it's usually pretty good. So yeah, 7.4 volt battery as standard. Uh, I personally don't think you need to go 11 volt. Uh, however, I have seen people run 11 volts in these and they've never broken. So it's not that it can't do it, <laughs> it absolutely can. Uh, I personally would not be putting any guarantees on an 11 volt on that blaster. Put it back on, like I mentioned, just make sure all of your cords for your battery are in and secure so they're not going to get torn up when you attempt to slide it back onto the actual buttstock, buff tube, and that's in and now locked in place, so that's all good. Notice how I started at the back this time, not the front. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, 
Moving on to the receiver, we'll start from the bottom and move our way up. Pistol grip. Uh, it's fairly firm and solid, like anything, like everything on this does still feel fairly toyish. It does have some strips on the back and some texturing here, along with a little finger guard just there. So I'll show you those there. Moving further on up to the trigger, it is a plastic trigger. You do need to be careful with this. The trigger feels really dicky, like you feel like you're going to snap it when you fire, but I'm hoping that that's just this one and not all of them, because I did have one of these that was highly modified previously. It never worked properly, but it, the trigger didn't feel like that. So yeah, so moving further along, you do have the magazine, the magwell. I'll get to the magazine at the end. It is very plastic and fairly typical Jinming style. That is your mag release button just there that you can see. And there's not really a whole lot on the right hand side. You do have that there, which would normally be the gas block. However, it's not nothing on this one pretty much. And the dust cover. The cool thing about the dust cover is when you pull back the charging handle, that will pop open so you can see your gearbox. It doesn't actually serve any purpose, but anyway. That little molding there is what would be a shell deflector, so when a shell comes out, it doesn't flick back and hit the person in the face. But again, gel blaster doesn't do anything, it's just there for show. You do have a rail up along the top of the blaster that you can see just here, and that's all along the top of the receiver. And just there, you have your charging handle. I'll show you how to use that shortly. That top rail is not quite a monolithic rail because there is a break just there where the front handguard connects onto the receiver. So just something there to keep in mind. The front handguard does have all these holes, which would normally be for venting and whatnot, but they don't really serve a purpose on a gel blaster, as you can expect. However, if you have a look in there, you can see it is still a plastic barrel. This always had a plastic barrel, and I doubt they're ever going to change that. It is a quad rail setup, though, on the front handguard, which is nice. You do have a little sling attachment point just here on the bottom of the front pillar site. Oh, I'll turn that around. So a little iron sight there, there's no rear iron sight, however this does come with a fake, very fake hollow sight you can put on there if you want to. I don't like the look of it, but that's personal preference like anything. And then of course you've got your outer barrel coming here, and this little muzzle device which just literally slots on, there's no screws, nothing. It doesn't serve a purpose, as you can expect, and there's the end of your barrel. Whoop. Just there. Let's see if we can turn that. Yep, there you can see. So yeah, so that's what we've got going on with our Gen 8 blaster. Now on this side of the blaster, there is your safe semi-auto function. When you put it in safe, which is facing that way, it stops the trigger from being pulled. So it's a mechanical, which I like. I prefer the mechanicals because the electrical one sometimes can be a bit dicky on these blasters. So I prefer that. You do have semi-automatic and automatic at the back. Now, automatic and semi-automatic, it's in a lot of cases with these, they don't really have a semi-automatic, it's just an automatic all the time. So most people don't bother with the semi, and I wouldn't bother with this one personally. You do have a little bolt, what would be a bolt release button there on a real one if you had the charging handle pulled back, but obviously does nothing on this. Charging handle, little clip on the side, put two fingers on, pull it down, and boom, there's your gearbox. Now here's the bit that is also quite surprising for those who might be interested. If you have a look at that gearbox, there used to be a clear plastic gearbox. However, they've actually upgraded to a nylon Gen 8 gearbox casing. That is a nice upgrade by no stretch at all. Uh, that is definitely nice. Again, they didn't have to do it, but they did, which is nice. Um, the Gen 8 is quite a solid base for upgrades. It does pretty well. You can get some pretty good power and output out of it with somewhat minimal work. Um, even things like just tightening up air seals and what air leaks and seals things like that, and you can get a good increase in power. So these are quite useful in that regard. That just pushes back in. But yeah, by no means bad blaster despite its age. I mean, they still use Gen 8s or Gen 8 clones in a lot of blasters that come out nowadays. So it, that just tells you how useful it actually is. And because they've been around for so long, you can buy entire kits that can upgrade this entire thing, including the casing. So not bad by any stretch. Anyway, magazine. Fully black, also fully plastic. It is automatic, as you can tell, with the little terminals here, so don't go tipping water in it. Motor it down the bottom, all of that jazz, make sure you clean it out. That's where your gels will actually feed out into the T-piece, and you do have a little gel loading door in the back just there. So, fairly straightforward, absolutely nothing special. To put it in, you just simply go in like so, push it up, it's clipped in. I normally just give it a couple of quick taps, nothing major and it's fine. There is a little bit of flaring on the inside of the magwell, but I wouldn't rely on it. Just be careful when you're putting your mags back in so you don't break anything. So that's about it. There's not really, 
a huge amount extra to say about this. It is fairly straightforward. So what I'll do now is I'll let it speak for itself. We'll have a look at the chrono and then the accuracy testing. We'll get into the last bit. Right, here so Jinming M4A1 Gen 8. Let's see what she is on the chrono. So we are getting the occasional low drop down to 190 on just high 180s, but we're still seeing an average of anywhere between 210 to 215 with the spiking up to 220 every now and then. So I'm gonna say 210 FPS is your average on this one. Um, that's no, not bad at all, all things considered, considering the age and whatnot of this. Uh, rounds per minute, 680. Fair enough, it's only a 7.4 battery. So at the end of the day, you're not expecting it to be a minigun, but it definitely does the job. And like anything with the Gen 8, good base for upgrades. So yeah, set outside, check out the accuracy. So, Jinming Gen 8 M4A1, gel blaster rifle, what was the standard or the benchmark for a lot of cases for quite a while? What do I think of it? It's still good, still capable, uh, somewhat limited, which is just due to its age and some of the newer, uh, more finely tuned stuff that has come out since. But what I would recommend on this is if you're looking at just getting into it or maybe you want to buy something uh, to learn the internals and how to modify things, but you don't want to lash out on something expensive and risk damaging that, this is definitely a good option for you. Maybe you've got kids or you're first coming into it. You can get these fairly cheaply. It doesn't take much to make them perform pretty decently. And to be honest, in some cases, you can actually do well with them as they sit. They're by no means a bad blaster. Um, so they are that. Would I buy one myself now? No. I've got enough that, are happy, that I'm happy with. I love using my ACR, love using my 249, which uses a Gen 8 version or clone, um, which only has a very minor difference, mainly in the trigger. So I wouldn't buy one myself. But it would not be a bad choice, especially if you are somewhat restricted on your budget and or wanting to learn how to do the modifications because so many people pull them apart, it's fairly straightforward nowadays and there's a lot of information you can find on how to do all that, which is very useful if you're new. Uh, kids, sure, why not? It does put out a, not a bad amount of FPS for what it is. Again, even bike standards that we have, uh, some of the standards we still have today. So it's definitely a good option. Uh, if you're an experienced person and you're looking for something really good, like solid internals, solid externals, all of that, I wouldn't buy this. Um, I'd spend a bit more money and buy something more solid like an ACR uh, or some of the other more higher end models. Um, this one here, because it is still fairly lightweight and whatnot, I'd be very careful about falling on it and, or putting too much weight on it because it may actually break and I have seen a couple of them break. Um, that's just the nature of the beast because of how they were built and their age. So they are, like I said, still very much toys by comparison to a lot of blasters. So you do need to take that into account. But yeah, by no means, not, by no means a bad blaster at all. It's still entirely capable. Uh, recommend accessories, standard fare, two extra magazines at least. I don't recommend going 11 volt battery because you'll get more life out of your gearbox and your magazines will last longer. So if you're hitting them, you don't need to put out more gels. But that's a personal preference. I know some people like to just go nuts on the rate of fire. Uh, an alloy barrel and a hop up would be nice and it would probably bring this thing up to you know, a consistent 220 FPS with a decent accuracy and range. So those are definitely things I would recommend. However, not crucial, especially if you are on a budget or you don't necessarily uh, feel confident about doing those mods yourself. So just be mindful on that. There are heaps of externals for these things. So if you're looking at dressing it up the particular way you want or painting it, there's heaps of options. So you're spoiled for choice in that regard. 
by no means bad. I just personally wouldn't buy one with my situation. I don't need one. However, good starting blaster, absolutely, or base for modification. By no means a bad option for either of those two. So that's what I've got. Let me know down below if you've had one of these and what you did to it, or if you still have it, you still use it, all that, curious to find out. Uh, what you guys think of them. Uh, I still think that they are entirely capable and a good option. Let me know your thoughts down below. Uh, maybe you're interested in getting into it and you're looking for a cheap entry level option. By no means will you go wrong with this. It is definitely entirely capable. Uh, yeah, like the video, comment down below, share it if you think it's uh, helpful. All that stuff it does wonders for helping out the channel. So thank you to those who do do it in advance. Wonderful people. Uh, if you'd like to donate to the channel, you can donate down below. You'll find a couple of links to PayPal and Buy Me a Coffee. I've heard the PayPal keeps playing up, so I'm going to try and have a look at that. But yeah, uh, entirely optional. I do not expect anyone to pay me, and I'm not going to stop you from seeing anything if you don't pay. So just be mindful of that. Shout out to our sponsors, Big Dan's up there at the top at the moment because he's done quite a bit to help me get some of my blasters up and running, especially some of the more silly ideas and things that I've been doing. So of course he deserves that because he hasn't really charged me a whole lot for it. So I do appreciate that, absolutely. So yeah, that's all I've got for you. Let me know what you think down below. And as always, I'll catch you next time.